Hi lads, summer's here and it's getting a little bit more humid below the waist. Now I've got a question for you. Have you heard of the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped? Well, you should have if you've listened to the Talking Walls podcast over the last month. My next question for you is, have you purchased it? And if not, why? Because it's a wonderful bit of kit. It's perfect for shaving your front, your back, I do my beard with it, and of course, other regions which I won't disclose. It's perfect for keeping yourself a little bit more trim. Now you're around the pool, now summer's here, now you're around the beach. So yeah, I use it, I think it's fantastic, and I believe that we may have a little special offer for you. Yes, Matt, we certainly do. Our followers can get an extra 20% off and free shipping on the Performance Package 4.0 by using the code TALKINGWALLS at manscaped.com. The Performance Package 4.0 will include the Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Trimmer, the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is an ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Reserver and Crop Reviver, which is your ball deodorant and spray toner, alongside your disposable shaving mats, Manscaped boxes and your travel bag. So head on over to manscaped.com using the link in our description and use code TALKINGWALLS for 20% off and free shipping. That's the code TALKINGWALLS at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. <laughs> Welcome back to the Talking Walls Transfer Podcast, the show where we look at all the transfer news in finer detail. My name is Dave and alongside me today, as you can see, we've got Mr. George Russell. George, how are you keeping? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good. It's been a, it's been a little while since you were last on the channel. I think it was the, the end of season podcast, wasn't it? So it's good to uh, good to have you back on. And I'd like to say a lot's happened, but it hasn't really. It's been pretty pretty quiet since then, mate. No, no, not a lot going on, unfortunately. It's the summer that we were promised, I think, when we spoke to Liam last was, you know, there's going to be a lot of outgoings before incomings. And, uh, yeah, there's um, there's been a few outgoings. There's probably a few more to come. Um, for me, all for the better, for most of it, and the majority of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what will happen when we actually start spending some money ourselves, to be honest. Yeah, so there's a, sort of a mix of news today. If, if I'm honest, it's predominantly outgoings again, but some interesting uh, talk about certain players. Uh, I think me and Matt had a, a sort of mini sweepstake. I thought we'd have a player in by last week and obviously it didn't happen. I was a bit optimistic. But to be fair, Matt thought we'd have a player in by the, uh, the 7th, which is tomorrow in, in, in our time. And th this video will be out on the 7th. So he's probably wrong unless Wolves put off some huge surprise as well. And frustratingly, we know re really no closer in bringing any players in, which is uh, annoying. But let's hope over the weekend we see some more news anyway. But, George, we're going to kick off with uh, something that's been breaking news within the last hour or so for us. It's Daniel Pedence. Been an interesting one with Pedence because last season, actually finished as our level top goal scorer. Six goals, not a huge amount. Um, but I think towards the end of the season, a lot of people were sort of happy or maybe happy is too strong a word, but would have been, wouldn't have minded Pedence being moved on, only a year left on his deal. Uh, it's been now said that Real Betis in Spain are in advanced negotiations to sign him. Uh, an official offer of seven to ten million pounds is being prepared and that's from Pedro, uh, Pedro Sepulveda, who's pretty switched on with the, uh, the Portuguese news. What do you think about this this move, George? I think we all knew that maybe Pedence would be moved on for uh, this summer, but what do you reckon? Yeah, it's no great surprise to me. I think there's been um, a few incidents last season where, you know, social media is sort of, you know, indirectly liking uh, abuse at him, more so from yourself, Dave, as well. Oh, yeah. I um, forgot what I was going to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, we, you know, Liam mentioned at the end of the season pod that actually Pedence didn't actually go back out for the lap, you know, the lap of honour at the end and clap the fans and all that sort of stuff and shot off home. He had a share and went home. Um, it's not a big surprise to me. It's been interesting that obviously he hasn't been on any of the pictures going out in the pre, you know, they're in Portugal at the moment. He didn't get called up for the Portuguese national squad. So anyone not on international duty, I believe, was meant to be back at Compton a few days ago and he wasn't one of those people that has been pictured or snapped on any of the videos. So it's no great surprise he's not there. And I, th I think, um, you know, it's no great shapes or surprises from what we've heard that, you know, him and Lopetegui probably didn't get on that well and he's out the door. And um, yeah, I'm I'm not too disappointed about the news, to be honest. It's quite a surprise, though, because after Lopetegui came in, he started off the year quite strongly. You know, he had a couple of good games. He scored the, the goal against Villa at the start of the year as well. But like it, it's almost been the story of Daniel Pedence where 
he gives you sort of three or four, like a good spell of three or four games, and then he goes missing for for long periods of the season. Uh, I think it was under Bruno Large, he had a really good form, um, and then again sort of fell off a cliff towards the end of the campaign. But you know, Wolves were much better with him in the squad last year. Um, and yes, he scored six goals, but uh, you know, when you look at it, that's nowhere near good enough. You know, six goals isn't a huge achievement. You know, for me, our wide players should be getting six goals minimum anyway, really, or at least sort of six to ten goal contributions. So, what do you think of the fee though, George? Seven to ten million pounds is that enough? Were you expecting possibly a little bit more? Um, I think it's probably fair because I'm not sure of his contract situation. Like, has he got like one year left? Yeah, maybe yeah, one year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I think we brought him in for roughly 12 million euro from memory. 12, 15 million euro, I believe, from memory. Uh, from Olympiakos. And um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not too displeased about the fee. I think it's a fair fee. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I feel like the time's right. For me, I've said it, I know we had we did the space. I think that was the last time I was on the channel um, when we were talking about uh, the Neves sale. And I say good a lot, and I truly mean that. When it comes to all that, well, the team, full stop. But definitely the attacking players. We can't keep scoring less than forty goals in a Premier League season and getting away with it. In mm -hmm. terms of going down, it will catch up with us. So I know people have got the favourites, um, and and you know, uh, sort of adhered people like you know Raúl of old and Adama, Neto, Pedent, all these people. But for me, all of them were culpable, and all of them are there for the chop. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased that we're moving Pedence out. And for me, you know, I, I, I would like to see that whole front line refreshed if we can possibly do it. Yeah, it was a little bit more according to transfer box. It was about 19 million euros. Okay. I think we did that on the podcast and you and Finn were both quite surprised about the value that we'd Yeah, actually, before. you know what? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, remember. yeah I do actually. Um, yeah, in, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> but the... Yeah, I think, you know, Adama's obviously gone, Pedence is going to go. I think a wide player is possibly someone that Wolves look at bringing in. And I think, you know, we, we do need need that unless you, um, Lopetegui's going to see Nunes more as that wider player still. You're hoping Neto can really kick on this season if possible. But the only what leaves you, Cunha could possibly play there, but seems to be more of a number 10. So you've only got Neto, Huang... Sarabia, maybe. Yeah, Sarabia, possibly. Well, you know, you're not. I'm, you know, there's not a huge amount of of players there again, unless the likes of Giles, Wright, and Ori get moved up there. So maybe wide players, uh, you know, are something that Wall's going to look at as well. But Pedence looks like in the next few days it's going to be crucial for the talks there, and we know how quick some of the sales have been moving uh, over the last few weeks or so. So let's wait and see. Um, George, there's another one that sort of come about today. A couple of the, uh, the members of the British uh, press have been rubbishing it, but Victor Nelson, he's a player that Wolves were linked with last year as well, currently playing for Galatasaray, Danish defender. Uh, according to uh, reports in Turkey, listeners of this podcast will know I'm not a big advocate of, of the Turkish reports. But according <laughs> to reports in Turkey, Wolves have had a 15 million euro bid rejected for Nelson. Um, apparently to, uh, Galatasaray won around 25 million euros for the 24 year old. Um, only six foot one, George. I was going to say it's quite short for a defender, but we've seen the likes of Lissandro Martinez and a couple of other different um uh, defenders come to the Premier League at a short eye and, and done all right. What do, you, what do you make of this one? Um, can't say I've watched a lot about him, I'm not a you know, sort of an adversary of a Turkish football and watch much of it, so I can't really say or claim I've, I know a lot about the guy. Um, seems to have a decent profile. Obviously, Galatasaray won the, the league last year as well, and he made, he made a lot of appearances for them 10, 10 caps for Denmark. So, and you know, Denmark are a, a good footballing nation these days. So, I think you know, if it's a lot, you know, if, if Wolves want him and Lopetegui wants him, you know, I, I'm pure, you know, I'm fully in the you know, trusting Lopetegui full stop. So, if it's a player that Lopetegui fancies, then you know, I'm all for it. Um, like I say, with centre halves, you know, naturally. Typically, you would say you want the centre half to be, you know, probably six three, six four upwards. Um, but I think those days are gone now. I think the game's played a little bit differently than what it was even sort of five, six years ago. And uh, you know, uh, when you watch footballers, I always think the best centre halves are the ones who have got like the quickest footballing brain. And you know, don't necessarily have to have them the, to be the biggest, most physical, or have the pace, but just read the game extremely, extremely well. So. Again, it could be in that sort of camp, but you know, if Lopetegui fancies him, you know, I'm all I'm all for it. It, it does feel like we're selling to get that war chest for Lopetegui to go out and buy his own players. So, you know, if he's identified Nelson as one of those, then yeah, I, yeah. You know, it'll be interesting to see if he comes in. 
Yeah, they had a pretty good record, didn't they? Uh, Lopetegui in his first transfer window in January. So, yeah, I think you're right there. And uh, the £25 million pounds that Galatasaray are holding out for, I believe, is uh, believe is Victor Nelson's release clause. So, we'll, um, we'll see if there's any more news on that. But like I said, it was linked before. We have seen it. In recent times, where wars have been linked with players and returned for them in, in windows. Lamina was one, Ray Nate Nori was another one, uh, a couple off the top of my head there. So it has happened uh, before, but we will wait and see if uh, Wolves return with a new uh, bid for uh, that one. Jordan, massive story over the last week or so, really, has been Max Kilman. Uh, we'll touch on Nathan Collins and Connor Cody a little bit shortly as well. But Max Kilman, um, Reports are coming from Italy that Napoli had, had an interest in him last weekend. Uh, Liam Keane actually said it on the Express and Star end of season podcast that they were one of the teams, uh, Spurs and Napoli, and, and that still seems to be the case. €35 million Euro bid uh, rejected by Wolves, which was a real surprise to me. I think it was just more of a shock that Napoli just came straight in. There wasn't a huge amount of you know, no. rumblings bit beforehand, and Wolves said to be holding out for €40 million. Euros. Been a little bit of talk over the last few days about Napoli returning for a new bid, but today it's been said that Wolves are want to open talks for a brand new contract for Max Kilman. It's said that he wants to stay at the club. He's happy to stay. He's not going to force a move. I think possibly he's he may be in the picture to become new captain uh, at Wolves as well. What do you what do you make of all this? Um, well, fans of the podcast would realise I'm not his biggest fan. Um, yeah. So, I mean. Personally, for €35 million, Euro, I'd, I'd drive him there myself. Um, but in all seriousness, I think we sort of got to the bottom of it when it comes to Kilman, especially on that end of season pod with um, Liam, was I actually think Max Kilman's a very good footballer, technically a very good footballer. I just don't think he's aggressive enough of a centre-half for Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think if you put Max Kilman in Man City's team, and I know this is, you know, anyone could look good, but he'd look a million dollars because there, there will be that much pressure on him. Yeah, it'd be unbelievable. You know, very good on the ball, very cool, composed um, on the ball. I just don't think he's aggressive enough for a, a you know, to be a Wolverhampton Wanderers centre half where we are in the league currently. And um, you know, I don't think he's aggressive enough in both boxes. That I think he should score more goals. I definitely think he should win more in the air as well. Um, but look, for me, you know, Max Kilman, we signed him from Maidenhead. Um, we've got more out of this deal than we ever thought we would with him anyway. He's made a lot of appearances for Wolves, and I, I you know, in, for that for that reason, I do, you know, I do applaud him and, and take my hat off to him. Um, Napoli, you know, Italian champions, Champions League football, it's almost like a fairy tale move from him. And you know, I know everyone says, oh, he, he used to play futsal, but he really did. So, <laughs> you know, that that dream there is there for him. And for me, look, I think it's extremely good money for a guy that. I'm not. I don't personally fancy that much uh, as a as a footballer for Wolves. I think it's a really good fit. I don't think he'll be ever worth as much as he is no. right now. And I feel like you know, obviously the Kim Min Jae, um, selling Kim Min Jae to buy Munich, Napoli, and get that money in, we probably can eke out another four or five million euro for him. And I think the reason why Wolves are doing that is because they know there's that twenty percent or at least alleged twenty percent sell on fee to Maidenhead. So I think Wolves will be quite comfortable with collecting thirty five million euro for the player themselves once they pay the Maidenhead fee as well. So I think that's probably what they're trying to hold out for. But um yeah, for me, you've got to sell him if you if you know, I don't see any way he stays if if Napoli are after him. I think it it could almost be almost like a smoke screen, you know, Wolves putting out the, you know, that they're maybe in talks and it forces Napoli to possibly put in a higher bid sooner rather than later for him. But I think it's just almost possibly too much too soon for Wolves as well. I think if the whole Nathan Collins move wasn't in the picture or Brentford hadn't come in for Nathan Collins and this bid had come in, I think Wolves would probably have pushed, you know, pushed to sell him a little bit more. But to lose two senior, three, if you count Cody, centre-backs, it's quite a lot in such a short space of time. Um but it will be interesting to see. Again, I think over the next few days we'll we'll see more about this. But it's uh, you know on the John Percy article he, he was saying that Wall uh, Kilman sort of part of the leadership group at Wolves and possibly one of the contenders to become new captain. You know on discussions that we've seen on Twitter for me it's always been probably Craig Dawson a few shouts for Lamina as well. Um, but Kilman very rarely, very rarely mentioned. He seems to be that shy, sort of shy character. And quickly, you talk about the Maidenhead um, sell on there. I did see, and I'm going to sort of address this because I did see someone say it was capped at a certain amount. 
So I've just sort of carried, I've said to a certain people, apparently it's capped at a certain amount. And then people were quoted me yesterday, like on big accounts, saying, no, it's capped at 2 million. Source, Dave has applied. I was like, no, please. So I deleted my tweet in the end because I just copied <laughs> it off someone else. So, but I, I, I don't know. It's, um, it'll be it wouldn't, surprise, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me because, you know, in a lot of deals with business, it's usually cap. The world news, you have a caveat, you know, in the capping system. I don't it think would, you would add. Logically. For a player that was so cheap, you know that long term, if he kicks on or gets a few first team appearances, he's going to be in the millions. I don't think you'd ha- you'd allow such a decent fee on there. I don't know for a player that was so cheap, like. But well, I don't. I don't at know. At the same time, when, when the devil's advocate, when we when we signed him, we probably never thought in a million years. Yeah, we, we signed him because of the potential, but to, to think he'd be going for 35, 40 million euro potentially, we probably never had that in our back pocket either. So, yeah, I, I reckon there will be some sort of or, or something there. I, I would have thought anyway. Uh, maybe, maybe it's you know two, three million quid. But you know what? For I think what step are they like? Step six, step seven are they or something? Yeah, like it'd be a ridiculous. Whatever they get, anything over a million quid is going to be amazing. It's going to be stupid. Really? Yeah, they're yeah, going yeah. to be like um, the Man City of the uh, <laughs> the non-league world for a bit. So um, no fair play to Maid. And then like I say, you know, I, I've got my opinion to Max Kilman as a as a centre half of Wolves, but. Um, no, fair play to the guy, and I think it's a dream, you know, it's a cracking move for him. So, you know, hopefully, it does, you know, I think it suits all parties if it does go, in my opinion, yeah. anyway. Yeah, one of the interesting things on that John Percy article, George, was that Wolves want to give him a new contract, but they're still under pressure to sell for FFP. So, where's the sort of the balance if we're under pressure? Obviously, surely be forcing Napoli to try and pay some more money. I don't know, but, um, you know, it, if he's going to be given a new contract, he's obviously a player that Lopetegui likes and rates. Obviously, higher than Nathan Collins, who we'll talk about in a minute anyway. So, you know, we've uh, we've got to back him as such. And we had a difficult season. Everyone was poor last year. So, let's hope full season now, full pre-season, not Lopetegui, and he, and he uh, really kicks on. Um, I mentioned Nathan Collins, though, George. There have been people out there that have wanted your opinion on this move because on our podcast, <laughs> you've spoken about Nathan Collins with such high praise over time. Um, and again, this move, I was going to say, well, it had, it had moved quite quickly. You know, Brentford within the, the space of a couple of weeks up their offers, and in the end, got their man. It was a, it was announced earlier this week. So, uh, twenty-three million pounds uh, was reported. I'd assume there'll be add-ons on top of that as well. But what are your yeah. overall thoughts on that move? I'm disappointed um, in terms of because I, I do genuinely think there's a very good footballer there. I know other people have got a different opinion, and that, that's fine. But for me, he's a He's got the makings of a very, very good centre half. Um, look, I think if you look at it, you know Brentford very rarely get it wrong in terms of their recruitment policy, and there's a reason why. You know, after the season, Nathan Collins is out at Wolves, barely playing football for the second half of the season. They're actually paying 23 plus add-ons for a guy that you know didn't get many starts in a, a very poor Wolves team last season on the whole. So that, that you know, I feel like. If, um, I feel like why people have got a little bit annoyed about it in terms of taking it out, you know, I, I'm disappointed full stop, but I feel like if it was like a Forest or a Luton or Sheffield United putting a bid in for Nathan Collins, yeah, it would be strengthening up potentially relegation rivals. I think that'll be for another podcast another time, but um, people wouldn't have been that averse to the, of selling them to like a Luton or a Sheffield United. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's Brentford, and like I said, Brentford very rarely get recruitment wrong. Um, I think people are, are thinking, shit, you know, this is probably, you know, Nathan Collins is probably the sort of player that Wolves would be looking at if he was playing somewhere else at the moment to come in and improve our squad. So um, the only thing I will say again is, look, trusting Lopetegui, if he's if Lopetegui doesn't really fancy him and we're making a profit on a player after 12 months, FFP yeah. and all that sort of stuff, it's a, it's a good deal for the club. But um, I, I'm 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 a bit disappointed by it because I think he's a I think he's a good player and you know what I've always felt like he's come across as a, a genuinely good person you know when he spoke about the club and on social media so I wish him the best but just not for two games next season when he plays yeah. against us. At the end of the day, George Brentford a gash anyway, so we'll be uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be absolutely so. Uh, no, yeah, he 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 left a, a nice comment on social media today as well about you know leaving and how big the fans were. No, it was a really nice uh, nice touch from him. But yeah, I appreciate both sides of the uh, of the camp on this one. I think Matt Hobbs did put out a statement. Uh, 
not directly saying it, but insinuating that Wolves are going to make a decent, you know, look after themselves basically whenever he moves on. But Matt Hobbs obviously believes he's a top player, thinks he'll be a top six defender in the future. Um, so it's pretty clear that it was Lopetegui's decision uh, to move him on. Um, but yeah, at least they've not made a, a loss. Like you said, it's a player that sort of sat sat on the bench for most of the season. Um, I think I mentioned it on one of the videos in terms of our club uh, sort of record with him in the team and out of the team. You know, we were so much better without him in the team record wise. And obviously, I know that sort of Lopetegui had come in and I think we'd only won three games with Nathan Collins starting overall uh, last season. So the record wasn't great with him in the, with, with him in the side. Um, but yeah, we do uh, we do wish him all the best. Uh, Connor Cody was another one as well, George. Similar sort of uh, move, you know, a player that wasn't really in and around the team. Um, people were worried when there were sort of reports about him possibly coming back. Um, but Wolves have made a decent amount of money on this one. I think more than people were expecting as well. It went for is it seven and a half plus a potential one million if if Leicester go up as well. Yeah, I think it's an unbelievable deal. Um... Again, like I feel like Connor Cody gets a lot of stick on social media, a little bit unfairly as well. At, at sometimes, like for me, it's the right time for him to move on. Uh, I was quite, I, I, I thought he'd have struggled in a back four for Wolves. Yeah, but, you know when we did that shift last year under Bruno, and you know we've been told stuff which will make you believe that actually Connor Cody did want to stay, and even Bruno wanted to keep him, but he might have been. Other people in the club at the time who said, "No, we want to get rid of you," and you know he had he had you know it was probably his only ever time to get called up to a World Cup squad, even if he was going as a 23rd man in that squad or 26th man, should I say, in the squad? You know he wanted to do that, and Everton gave him the opportunity to do to do it. So um, for me, he's the best captain in our lifetime, certainly for the sure. most successful, um, and you know he, he's. He's an unbelievable signing for us. I think he was a couple million quid for Huddersfield Town. Uh, you know, he's. He, I've got fond, mem- fond memories of Connor Cody, and you know, for me, you know, before Fosen took over and we got actually got good, it was all about old-fashioned passion and uh, pride to wear a wolf shirt, and he brought that in abundance. So, uh, yeah, look, I wish him all the best in, in his move. Um, you know, for me, I'll always have fond memories of him. I think it was the right time for him to move on. I think uh, Everton are probably the worst run football club in in <laughs> England, if not world football. The fact they could have brought him for four and a half million and sold him for seven and a half million, especially when they haven't got a pot to piss in, would have been you know three million quid in their back pocket. Um, but no, I, I think he'll go there, and you know what, he'll go to Leicester. He'll probably be captain. I would have thought. I yeah. reckon they'll probably give him the armband, and you know it's, they're a big club. They're a big club, and he can go there and, and flourish. And I'm sure he'll be a revelation for him in the championship. Um, and he'll do a job for him next season. Um, so yeah, well, I can't really argue with it. Good money and, and a good move for Connor. Yeah, I think I think it's a good move as well. I think sometimes, you know, not just football and life. Sometimes you have to take a step back to sort of make the the, the steps forward again. And I think that's what he'll do. And it's happened before. The championship is such a difficult this division to get out of. But I think Leicester with the coach that they've got there. Um, the players that they are bringing in, you know, people laugh at the Harry Winks deal, but I think he's more than good enough to, to be, you know, to do the job in the championship as well. So I think they should be fine. And, and like you say, Connor Cody, in our lifetime, in recent years, the Fosin era, unbelievable captain, giving us some of the our best moments, or well, being captain at, during our best moments. So, yeah, and I think Matt said it on the uh, the last transfer podcast. We are going to try our best to get him on onto the channel, but we'll uh, we'll wait and see. And Jordan, we're going to finish off with the the man, the myth, the legend, Heyo Kawabi. Wore the wool shirt once, and that was on his unveiling video. Never worn it again since. Uh, looks set to join standardly age. But Wolves making a tidy 800 grand profit on this one, George. You know, he, here comes the money. Happy days. And it almost makes it worthwhile, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. It's mad. Like, you know, I actually saw a tweet saying, oh, you know what? He could actually do a job in the squad. And I was like, well, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know how you come to that conclusion because. No, never seen him kick a ball. I couldn't even tell you if he could do five kick ups or not. I've not seen him kick a ball. So, like, you know, the fact is, you know, is it, I think he was in the last Japanese squad, wasn't he, as well, in the international break? God, he, he had was, a decent and... year last year, to be fair. He got some decent goal contributions, but so I know Totti's sort of transition, but it t- took him a hell of a long time to sort of break solidly into the wall scene. But Kawabi's like well into his 20s now, you know, I think he's late 20s. So, 
yeah, it's yeah, never going to happen, is it? It just helps the balance sheet, doesn't it? When again, when it comes to FFP, but you know, there's a bit of profit there. Um, it allows them to go and get a couple of players, or potentially get a loan deal in, or something like that. It's just, you know, it's just all creative accounting, and we know that grasshoppers thing. I know there's nothing untoward in it, but it was all, you know, every way you want to look at it, it's benefiting Wolves in many ways. That deal. I think you know what though, eight eight hundred grand profit for someone that hasn't kicked a ball in about eighteen months. He's, I know people laugh at it, but that's de- <laughs> that is decent business, to be fair. Like you know, so yeah, yeah, absolutely can't go wrong with it. No, no, exactly. Well, it's like you know, let's, let's, if we lower it down a little bit, it's like buying something for fifty quid, not using it for eighteen months, and then selling it for one hundred and thirty quid. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna say no, are you? So nah. yeah, there were people. I think on the the last two sell loan keep videos, both last season and this season. I was adamant that he wasn't going to kick a ball for Wolves. Then he had a half decent year in Switzerland. I thought, oh no. But, you know, it, it no, I, I don't think it was ever, ever going to happen. Don't think he trained with us once. Um, and obviously, the only ever time we've seen him in, in a Wolves shirt is when he was unveiled as well. So, yeah, Jordan, unfortunately, is more, more outs and ins. Um, there have been a few more rumors today, but nothing too concrete. But obviously, if things hype up uh, again in the next week or so, they'll be on next week's show. It includes Valentin. Uh, Gendry, who's a right back, a French right back currently playing in Italy. A couple of young players playing in Italy and uh, Portugal as well, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more as well. Anything else, George, that you, you want to add to the show? You set me up nicely, aren't you? I think oh, with yeah. uh, my news. Um, sure. no, so again, I'm not even claiming to be in the know or anything like that. So please don't hold me down if this doesn't happen. But I got, um, I got a message a few days ago, um, who, who informed me about the Sasa. The incident which blew oh, up, boy. let's be honest. Yeah. Um, no, but I've, I've been told apparently that Lockerteg is a, an admirer of Fred from Manchester United and Wolves have got some interest there. I'm not saying he's going to kick a ball for us or even claiming that, but you know what? We've had a bit, you know, there's a lot of uh, cells at the moment. And, you know, if you want any news, that's something I've heard. You know, I think actually, for what it's worth, I think it'd be a good signing for us or potentially Agreed. a good player for us or a good option. I know that Fulham have been linked with him as well. And um, I know Man United are looking to sell. Him, Van der Beek, and McTominay, because I think they're trying to, you know, get a few names through the door. So, might be one just to keep an eye on. Um, nothing concrete in that, so please don't shoot me if it doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, something to keep our eye on, I think. And uh, as soon as Fabrizio uh, tweets it, I'll get him to uh, say as per. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would those. I'll probably take all, any of those three that you just mentioned there: Fred McTominay, uh, Van der Beek. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think I think it's one. Of, I think McTominay would be a solid sign for us as well. Like like Van der Beek. I mean, he went to Everton and was pish as well, wasn't he? Um, but Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, but McTominay, it, it's one of those things, isn't it? I feel like they would do a job for us. I'm not necessarily. Mm. I'm not convinced we're desperate for a centre midfielder at the moment. In terms of when you look at the rest of the squad, I know that sounds stupid because we lost Matinho and Neves, but at least you got Lamina, Gomez, and Nunes. Booby uh, like, yeah. as well. So um we've there's other areas that need strengthening, but yeah, we absolutely do need quality all over the pitch. But um yeah, you know what? Fred or McTominay wouldn't be necessarily the worst bit of business we could do. Yeah, fingers crossed. And I'm you know, I was thinking sort of towards the start of the video, I know I sort of said yeah, players are coming back to pre-season now, but international players are still on holiday at the minute. So maybe the next week or so, that's where it'll start to hype up. I'm just trying to get a bit of confidence, you know, for people <laughs> listening or watching watching the podcast. But maybe the next week or so when the international players, you know, the big boys at Wolves are actually there focusing on, uh, come back in. But um, yeah, Wolves should be having some games over the next few days or so. Guys, they're currently in Portugal. I believe they've got a game on Sunday and they're looking to, to do one more game as well. So if there are um, any streams or matches available for us to watch, we'll uh, give our thoughts on the channel on those as well. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify please do leave us a review George before we finish off where can people find uh, you if they wish um, so it's at George was 7 on Twitter and Instagram and uh, back on Talking Walls podcasts next season bash yes bash and <laughs> at Dave as a party everywhere Twitter, Instagram even that Fred's thing if that ever takes off I don't know if it will but I'm not really posting on there but you know, no. jump, on, jump, <laughs> jump on there if you wish. But yes, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, and yeah, we'll catch you next week where fingers crossed walls are much closer to signing a player. Enjoy the rest of your week and we'll catch you very soon. <laughs>